Hey everybody, how are you doing? Uh, today we're going to go over how to calculate investment and trade performance. It's very important that you know how to calculate your returns, whether it's a single trade over one period, uh, multiple trades, uh, adding up to a portfolio return, or your total portfolio performance over multiple months or multiple periods. Now everything we go over here today, I have on a Google spreadsheet. So you can go over, you can look at the numbers, look at the math, and figure out how to do it yourself. Just want to reiterate, it's extremely important that you know how to calculate this because this is money in your pocket. And if you don't understand how performance and returns are calculated, you might actually end up making a pretty bad or improper trade, not knowing what your actual real risk and return uh, profile actually is. So let's jump right into the very basic, the holding period return. So there's two ways to calculate this. And what a holding period return is, it's basically let's say a crypto QF, that's me, invest in Bitcoin at time zero. And let's say it's $4,234. And then I end up closing my trade whenever that is in the Bitcoin uh, dollar amount value is 5,421. So how much should I earn? What is my portfolio or investment or trade return in that case? Well, there's two ways to calculate it. You can see this at the top of the page. Uh, the two formulas are, uh, really there's two variables that are important in these formulas. It's the ending value and the beginning value. The ending value is the 5,421 and the beginning is the 4,234. So the two formulas are, ending minus beginning divided by beginning, or uh, quite easier, just ending divided by beginning uh, minus one. And so let's go over the math here. So in the bottom left hand of the screen, you can see the uh, example I just gave, the Bitcoin dollar example. Uh, we'll go over the, the first formula, 5,421 minus 4,234 uh, divided by the beginning value of 4,234. And that is a return of 28%, pretty darn good. Uh, so most of you are probably crypto fans that are watching this. So let's, let's do an example in Satoshi's. So let's take a look at XRP or Ripple, as I like to actually call it. Uh, let's assume that it was 9,123 sats at the beginning of a period and it declined to 8,842 sats at the end. So here I'm using the second formula, which is uh, ending divided by beginning minus one. Here you can see Ripple decline by about 3% in terms of Bitcoin. Remember this is uh, in Satoshi's. Uh, so let's uh, move on to the next page. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to uh, you know, comment here on this video or shoot me a direct message on Twitter at CryptoQF and I will be happy to answer. So what if you want to convert that Ripple return into dollars? So remember we had the Bitcoin return of about 28% and the Ripple loss of 3%. So what is the Ripple or XRP return in dollars? So first and foremost, you can't just add them together. You can't go 28 plus a you know, minus three loss equals 24.95. That is wrong. You cannot do that. You have to convert your, your XRP into dollars. So how to do that? This is a pretty basic, uh, what they call cross product here. So if you remember, we had Bitcoin in terms of dollars. So that's what you see in the middle right of your page, BTC over USD times XRP over Bitcoin. That is the ripple in Satoshi's. If you multiply those two out, you end up getting XRP over dollars or ripple just in terms of dollars. Why? Because you can cancel the two Bitcoin terms. So by multiplying those two out, you get Ripple in terms of dollars or cents in this case. So the beginning value is the 4234 uh, times the beginning Satoshis of 9123, which is about 38.6 cents. The ending, if you did the exact same, you get 47 to 48 cents. Then you do the exact same math we did before, the ending divided by the beginning minus one, 
and you get the ripple return of 24.09%. So that would be a ripple return in terms of dollars. And just remember, all this is on the Google spreadsheet. You can see all the math and uh, you kind of get your hands dirty and change numbers around and do whatever you'd like. Uh, you know, because like I said, it's very important that you guys understand this and that you can calculate this. <clears throat> so what about your portfolio return in a single period? So again, we're still talking uh, time zero, you have a bunch of trades, a bunch of assets in your portfolio, and then time one at the ending of the period, uh, all your assets you know went up or down, whatever it is. What is your total portfolio return? Uh, here we're assuming fully invested, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. So here is if you have 10 assets equally weighted, so there's 10% in each asset. That's pretty rare you're gonna be exactly equally weighted, but I wanna start with a simple example. So the way to calculate your portfolio return is called a sum product. What you wanna do with a long way is simply multiply each return. So in this case, the ripple return of 24.09 times the weight 10% and you get 2.41. You do that for each one. So for TRX, you do 21.31 times 10% and you get 2.13. So you get these 10 numbers, then you add them up and you get a, a return of 9.31. Uh, you don't have to do this a long way, whether you're in uh, Excel or MATLAB uh, or uh, you know R or Google Docs, whatever it is, you don't have to do it the long way, but I wanted to show you how it's actually done. <clears throat> uh, the actual shorthand, if you're in Google or if you're in Excel, is uh, the formula in the middle right of your page, the sum product formula. That'll do uh, the whole thing in one one burst get you that that 9.31 percent now when your assets here are incubated there's a, a pretty neat shortcut pretty easy you can just average all your returns and the returns here are the 24.09 for ripple all the way down to the 17.65 percent if you just average them out you would get 9.31 however you cannot do that if your assets or your coins your stocks your bonds whatever it is if they're not equally weighted. So that is our next example. So here I took the exact same returns, same coins, and just changed the weights around. Pretty simple, uh, an exact same example here, except the difference of weights. I did the multiply of the return by the weight and get that contribution to the return. That's what is the 1.20%. That's what it's actually called. It's a contribution to return. Uh, and then you add all those up together and you get 10.5%. However, here, the key point here is you cannot average your returns. If you just did a basic average, you would get, again, 9.31%, which is wrong. Which makes a lot of sense here because you can see the Bitcoin weight is 34%. And here in my uh, fake example, uh, Bitcoin is up 28%. Of course, this is 2018, Bitcoin is never up 28%, so we know it's fake. I'm just kidding, hopefully in 2019, you will have a lot of up periods. But again, it's very important to know you cannot average your returns if your portfolio is not equally weighted. And if you notice, you cannot sum your returns. I see people do this all the time. That is completely 100% wrong, not even remotely close to right, so don't even add up all your returns. You have to do the sum product here. Okay, so if you remember a few weeks back, I posted a handful of Twitter polls just to kind of get you guys thinking in terms of how to calculate performance. So one of my questions here uh, was about uh, three different people, J, K, and Jim. They each have 10K, although sometimes I, I start with $100. You'll see in a bit, and there's different questions for each one of these guys. And this is about calculating portfolio performance over time, over multiple periods, over multiple trades, over multiple months, whatever it is, okay? So here we're talking about Jay. He has $10,000 invested, and he has monthly returns of 5%, 20%, 4%, a loss of 29%, 6 negative 10%, 15%, and 12%. They could be periods or months, doesn't really matter. They're independent, and and they follow each other. What is his account's rate of return? Uh, the poll here actually got it right. It's 14.3%, and uh, due to volatility, 
you can't just you know average all the options or uh, sum them or anything like that, uh, which is why it's not 2.9%. Uh, or you know you can multiply it by 12. There's a lot of different things you could have done to get a completely wrong answer. The only correct answer here is 14.3. So how do you get that? <clears throat> so again, here's some math. Uh, hop over to my Google spreadsheet to actually see the underlying formulas in these cells. Uh, it'll be in the YouTube description uh, as well as uh, on the first page of the stock where you can always uh, DM me if you can't find it. So here are the eight periods or eight months that Jay has returns for. Now remember he is fully invested here uh, each month and instead of the 10K start, I'm actually only starting with $100. So my bad. So this is pretty simple. This is the long way. I almost call this the, the mathematical proof. So we start with $100 and the very first period, he gets 5% on his $100. So uh, 100 times 5% is $5. So we learned $5, start with 100, so now he has $105. You do that for the next period where he earns 20% on his 105, all of a sudden now he has $126. So on and so forth, all the way down through the eight periods or eight months where he has $114.32. And going back to the holding period uh, return uh, formula at the very beginning, where you do ending divided by beginning minus one, you get 14.32%. So the exact correct answer. Now, if you're trying to do this by hand, this is the way to do it, or at least the proof way. It takes a while, especially if you have a lot of assets and a lot of time. Uh, it's really not the way to do it. Uh, but this is uh, you know, how you can kind of check your work too. So uh, here's the correct way to do it, uh, kind of one correct long way of doing it and one short and sweet correct way of doing it. So the whole point here is you have to compound your returns. Since there's volatility in the returns, uh, it introduces the fact that you're actually gonna lose a little bit. So volatility actually detracts from your total return. So if there's no vol in your return, then your return is, I guess you want to call it the maximum given, given your returns that you got. But when you have volatility in your returns, your returns actually detract a bit. Uh, so uh, here, what do you have? So uh, 5%, 20%, again, those returns. To do it by hand, you have to add one to each return. So get it in the form of uh, 1.05 or 105% here. Uh, or 1.2 or 120%. So basically just add one to each one. Then you multiply out all the returns, just multiply them together, and then you subtract one and you get 14.32%. The exact same answer. But if you wanna do it in one cell, which I would prefer, which is what I do, you have to do a uh, like an array-based formula here. You can see the formula down here. So you can calculate all this in one uh, beautiful cell. So what about K? So K here actually only invests 10% of our capital for each trade. Exact same returns for each trade. Uh, you could think of them as monthly returns where she only has 10% invested or trades, doesn't necessarily matter. Same answer either way. Uh, but here you see a lot of people in crypto where they do trades where they're only risking 5% or 2% or 10% or whatever it is. So this gives you an idea of what happens in terms of your return uh, potential when you do that. Now, when you do this, it also impacts your volatility or your risk. I made another video about volatility and risk too, so please check that out. But when you do something like 10% of your capital per trade or per month, your volatility goes way down and your return actually goes way down as well. So uh, what is the answer here? Well, the crowd actually got this wrong. So the crowd uh, voted for 14.3, the exact same as the previous uh, question, which is completely wrong. They should have known this pretty obvious because you're only investing 10% per trade or per month. The right answer here is 2.2%. So you gotta remember here, she's only investing 10% of her capital. Now, I kind of showed just the long way here because uh, it's not necessarily needed to get into a fancier way, but this is the, the math here. So I have multiple columns here. So you have your starting capital, invested capital, your return on invested capital, your ending capital, and also have your portfolio return in that particular trade or month. So the starting capital here, again, I apologize, I'm starting with $100 instead of 10,000. So uh, kind of just re reducing it 
uh, proportionally. Again, it doesn't doesn't matter that the point is she's only investing 10% uh, of her assets and here her assets are, are $100. So for the first period, she starts with 100 and she only invests $10, which makes a lot of sense. 100 times 10% is 10. So what's her return on that invested capital? Well, she earned 5% on $10, so she got 50 cents. So what is her ending capital? It's your starting capital of 100 plus your return, 50 cents. And that's $100.50. And here you can see her portfolio return during that trade or that period or that month is only 50 basis points. It's not 5%, which makes a lot of sense to most of you, hopefully, because she only has 10% of her capital invested. For the next period, she actually starts now with $100.50. So her invested capital is $10.05 and so on and so forth. So invested capital changes, goes up, up and down because she's only investing 10% uh, of her starting capital for each trade or each period. And you put it all together and her return is 2.23%. Oops, I'm bouncing around, sorry about that. But yeah, 2.23%, which is 2.2, which is what we just saw. Uh, sorry for bouncing. My bad. So now we're going to talk about Jim. So Jim here, very similar to K, where uh, he's only investing part of his assets. But here it's a static amount of dollars. He's only investing a thousand dollars. This time I'm actually assuming the correct amount of starting with ten thousand. So in time zero, his first trade or first month or first period, he's actually investing ten percent, just like uh, K did. However, as the portfolio grows or declines, he's still only going to invest in $1,000 no matter what. So here's the exact same spreadsheet. Again, you can hop on Google Doc and you can kind of go through this. And here you can see the invested capital column. It's always $1,000. So he's always doing that. I actually have an error on this page. It's not starting times 10%. It's actually 1,000 all the time. So I apologize. But regardless, the answer here is 2.3%. And if we go back, the crowd actually uh, got this one wrong. Uh, they voted 14.3% again, just like previously, which is wrong. So like I mentioned before, it's 2.3. Uh, so you can see whether you're doing 10% or you know uh, close to 10%, but it's a fixed dollar amount and a thousand in this case your returns actually do change. So just keep that in mind, uh, how you decide to trade, whether it's a fixed dollar amount, fixed uh, a percent of, of capital amount, whatever it is, uh, it's certainly going to impact your total portfolio returns. So what about this? Does the order matter? So same gym example, $1,000 every single trade. However, now the order of his returns or his trades actually change. Where you can see it, uh, the first trade or first month, is minus 29%. Now this is weird, but the crowd actually got this right. I don't know, this is just by random chance, but they picked 2.3% because guess what? The order does not matter when you're compounding returns. Now, see here, another example, uh, the same little area here where it's not starting times 10%, it's just 1,000, but you go through the math, the order does not matter. Uh, Jim gets to his 2.3%. So everybody, you know, that wraps up just going over returns, understanding how to calculate those, whether it's individual trade, uh, whether you have a portfolio of assets and what's your portfolio return, and how to calculate total portfolio return over multiple months or multiple periods. I hope this was uh, good for you guys and that you learned a little bit. Uh, if you did, you know, obviously like this video, you know, follow me on Twitter, follow me here on YouTube, and that would be you know awesome. Again, uh, if you want to look at the math, just check out the Google Sheet, and it'll have everything there. I'll keep it posted for a while. So uh, you know, thank you again, and I really appreciate it. Take care.